that's for right All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for attending. I'll give everyone just a few more seconds to join and then we will get started. Um, you can see here there's that QR code on the left. So when you get a chance, just um, feel free to scan that. This will be pretty interactive, um, just an opportunity to really get your feedback. Uh, it's not like a test or anything. I just would love to hear just the opinions of some people. And then um, there's also a good opportunity to use that QR code to ask some questions at the end. So feel free to scan and get started. And I will um, just jump right in, I guess. So. All right. Okay, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for attending this presentation. My name is Katie and I'm a recruiter at FDM Group. I have been at FDM for about a year and a half, a little less than that now. And during that time, I've just really found a passion for helping individuals uh, feel more comfortable during interviews and figure out where their confidence is. So um, that's what I hope to do for you today. I'm hoping to give you some valuable insight on how to take your interview skills up a level. Oh, also that QR code on the right will lead you to my LinkedIn. So feel free to add me. I'm happy to continue this conversation afterwards if you have any questions. So yeah, just feel free to add me and I can put that up again at the end. But let's get started. Here's a really quick agenda of what we're going to cover in today's presentation. So I'll do a quick introduction about really what this presentation is going to be about, as well as FDM group. Then I'll dive into some personality types. By that, I mean thinking like introvert, extrovert, and uh, the differences between them. Then we'll go ahead and dive into the strengths of these two different personality types, which I think is really important, especially for those introverts, because I think they tend to assume that they're probably not going to be successful in interviews. And that's simply not the case. They have plenty of strengths uh, that I would love to go over. Then we will kind of relate that to interviews and give you some tips on how to feel more confident in your interview. And then at the end, we will be sure to save some time for Q&A. So a little bit about FDM Group. We are an IT consulting company that has been around since 1991, so about 32 years. Uh, FDM was founded with the intention to really bridge the gap between education and experience and help individuals get started in the tech or the business industry. That was our goal 32 years ago, and that's what we've maintained for the past 32 years. We've helped over 3,000 individuals every year get started in this industry. And it's an international company that has over 95 nationalities working together as a team. A little visual about FDM groups. So we started back in 1991 in London. And through from there, we expanded throughout mainland Europe and then headed over to North America, have expanded since then to um, Asia, Africa, as well as Australia and New Zealand. So we've really grown a lot over the past 32 years, and we hope to continue to do that. We are some of the leaders in the recruit, train, deploy industry, meaning we want to help find that top talent and hire them train them uh, with a specialized training for their client and then deploy them out to clients where they are able to help those clients on site meet, meet their business goals, but also give them the opportunity to get those first couple of years of experience in this industry, which I'm sure we all know is the hardest part. So that is, that is our whole goal here at FDM. And again, I'm happy to continue this conversation afterwards if you want to learn more about the company. But today I really want to focus on the strengths or excuse me, different tips for interviewing. So here is a good chance to um, give me your thoughts. What do you think hiring managers look for during interviews? There are no right or wrong answers here. So just take a couple seconds and uh, type something out. Would love to hear different people's thoughts. Show results. All right. Good communication is definitely an important skill to have in interviews as well as confidence. Good job. Anyone else? Yes. Um, yeah, qualifications. Absolutely. You want to make sure that you have the, the skills that the job is requiring. 
personality is definitely going to be a big part of it as well. Um, I think that relates to communication. If you're able to show your personality and communicate who you are, that's going to go a long way. Um, and being yourself ties into that as well. I like that everybody is kind of on the same page here. Um, hard workers, definitely. I do see a couple more people typing. So I'll give you guys a few minutes because these are some really strong answers so far. Team skills, yeah, definitely. I think that also relates to communication and relationship building. And problem solving is another huge thing. Um, if you don't know the answer, being able to really think logically and figure out how you would find that answer. And people skills, again, absolutely. So it looks like everybody understands that you really do need to be a strong communicator in order to succeed, um, not only in interviews, but just in the corporate world. Um, I am going to give one more second. Okay, perfect. Knowing how to use your resources. I like that. I think that also relates just to like logical reasoning. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move to the next slide. These are some great answers, by the way. So this is, um, these are the seven top skills that we look for at FDM specifically, but I think a lot of companies and a lot of hiring managers are going to look for the exact same thing. So someone who is a driven performer um, and an opportunity seeker, they're going to be goal oriented and really put in the work that they need to in order to achieve those goals. And uh, they're going to stay motivated pretty easily. Someone who is a curious learner, they want to really just build their knowledge and skill set. And then they're also able to take it a step further and use that knowledge and that skill set to logically resolve problems like we had just talked about. Someone who is an analytical thinker. I think adaptability and resilience are two really important um, factors or excuse me, skills to have. Um, in any industry, but especially in the tech industry, this is an industry that's constantly changing. So you do need to be adaptable and just able to really stay motivated in the face of changes or of challenges in the workplace. And then, like a lot of people said, someone who is a relationship builder and is able to work with others to reach a common goal and communicate with others really well. These are not the only traits that hiring managers look for, but I think these are some really important ones that are pretty common. All right, now I wanna talk about the different personality traits. Um, when we're talking about personality types, I wanna kind of think about two main personality types, which are introverts and extroverts. They have pretty defining traits or factors to them. So I wanna start with introverts. Those individuals, you probably think of them as quiet or shy. They tend to be a little more reflective. They take time to process information and uh, reflect on it. Um, not as quickly as an extrovert might. They really want to fully understand something before moving forward. They're going to be pretty observant as well. So they have the ability to just notice those small details because they're taking the time to really observe something. Um, they're going to be a little more humble as well and patient. Uh, and like we said, quiet. And then personal. They're, they are going to tend to keep to themselves a little more than their extroverted counterparts. So when you think extrovert, you're probably thinking someone who's outgoing and social. These are individuals who have a lot of energy and really feed off of the energy of others too. So they do tend to be very social, um, really good at communicating, um, pretty open as well and trusting. So they're able to form relationships with people pretty quickly. Their trusting of others and their open personality really allows um, other people to trust them pretty easily. Now, um, you might relate to one of these columns. You might relate to the other one. You might also find that you're relating to some of those traits um, from both columns, and that's totally normal as well. So introversion and extroversion are a sliding scale. It's not definitive one or the other, not mutually exclusive. It can also change over time. So you might have felt a little more um, introverted when you were younger, and now you are a little more comfortable talking to people or vice versa, and that's totally normal. Another thing that is worth mentioning is that outgoingness is not a defining factor when it comes to introversion and extroversion. You can be an outgoing introvert, absolutely. And you can also, a little more rare, but be a reserved extrovert. Um, that's not a defining factor. There's definitely correlation with more reserved introverts, uh, but the real determining factor of introversion and extroversion is going to be how you get your energy. So 
while an extrovert is really going to feed off of the energy of others and use that to help them recharge, an introvert is probably going to find it easier to recharge either on their own or in a small group. They might be a little more selective with their relationships. Um, Here's a slide we always like to highlight because it shows that introversion is not something that needs to be defeated or overcome. These are all famous introverts and the common theme with all of them is that they are experts in their craft. And that happened because they spent hours perfecting their craft. Uh, and that's a pretty common theme for introverts. They tend to, um, on their own time, really work on something, whatever their passion is. And once they feel confident, that's when they go out and show the world. So if you're introverted, you might have been able to relate to this experience where once you go out and show a skill to someone, they go, oh my gosh, I had no idea that you were so talented in XYZ skill. Pretty normal for introverts. Uh, we do tend to just work on that craft on our own time. We're more about uh, showing, not telling. So I just think this is a really important skill, or excuse me, slide to go over because introverts do have a lot of skills and a lot of advantages. And I will get into those in just a moment. But right now I do want to focus on those um, advantages and strengths of extroverts. So extroverts tend to have high confidence and self-esteem. That could be for a couple different reasons. One is that they're just a little more self-assured in their social skills. Um, could also be because in general, um, society, especially in America, does tend to favor extroverted personality types. So if you're being told that your personality is the preferred or the better personality, it's a lot easier to find confidence and self-esteem with that. Um, they also have strong communication and social skills. They feel really comfortable talking to others and having, uh, whether it's fun or difficult conversations, they also are able to form and maintain relationships a lot more easily because of those strong communication skills. They are expert collaborators who feel really comfortable working in groups, um, big, diverse groups of people who have different work ethics, different ideas. They like working with that. and. Um, taking the different opinions to come up with a solution that really does satisfy everyone. Um, they're also more likely to take initiative or big risks. So while an introvert really wants to analyze the situation, look at every pro and every con and kind of balance it out, an extrovert is more likely to focus on the potential advantages or the potential reward of a situation. So they are more likely to take that jump. And I think there is um, definitely a strength in that. The real strength comes from the balance between the two, though, having someone who is able to put in a little more effort and then having someone else who is able to say, OK, I think we did all of the planning and analyzing we can. Let's just take that risk and see if it pays off. And then because of all of these other strengths, extroverts tend to make really strong leaders. Most leaders or managers in the United States do identify as extroverts. That's because they have that confidence, that self-esteem, that ability to form those relationships and um, lead others. And now I want to dive into some of the strengths of introverts as well. So introverts are really good listeners and they're able to pay attention to detail. They are not processing information as soon as they hear it. They're taking the time to digest that information and process it at a, at a speed or a rate that's comfortable for them. So they are able to pick up on a lot more details that others might miss. Um, they're very intuitive and are able to gauge the moods and dispositions of others. They're really good at just reading those um, nonverbal cues. And that's because they tend to express a lot of their emotions through nonverbal cues as well. Because they are a little more personal and able to kind of keep to themselves and use their, I don't want to say mind, their, their creative skills a little more. They do tend to be more creative and imaginative. Um, and then they have very strong written language skills because they're not just writing it out and then submitting it. They're taking the time to proofread, reread, and fix any mistakes that they're coming off exactly how they want to. Um, so it's uh, pretty common that introverts receive higher scores on like reading and writing comprehension exams. And then they are really thorough and they spend time sifting through information. They want to feel really confident with any information that they give out. 
So there are plenty of strengths for introverts and extroverts, but now I wanna talk about how that relates to interviewing. So let's do another open-ended question. Um, tell me how you like to prepare for interviews. And if you want, feel free to also include whether or not, or whether you consider yourself an introvert or an extrovert. So once again, I'll give everybody a minute or two to submit some answers um, and we can discuss those before we move forward. I think there might be a glitch, Katie. It's not letting us submit answers on here. Okay, so we might, it looks like we might not be able to for this one. Okay, no worries. So um, that's okay. I'm here to tell you all the different ways to um, prepare for an interview. So let's just jump into that then. Before we talk about how to prepare for an interview, let's go over the different types of interviews. So a traditional interview is going to be exactly what you think of when you hear the word interview. So um, usually you will be interviewing with one individual who's testing uh, your various skills and making sure that you're a good fit for whatever the role is. Um, a panel interview is going to involve more than one interviewer. So you might be interviewing with a recruiter, a hiring manager, and a maybe a lead developer or something, all in the same interview. They're all going to be asking you questions that relate to the skills that they specifically need or are looking for um, for the role. A group interview is going to be when you are interviewing with other individuals who are also interviewing for the same role. So um, extroverts tend to do pretty well in these types of interviews. They're able to feed off of the energy of those other people and kind of collaborate with these people who are interviewing with them. Um, introverts tend to struggle a little more in group interviews. Uh, they hear other people answering questions and feel the need to participate as well. They might be a little worried that others are answering or giving more um, longer answers, speaking a little more often. And that can be stressful. If you are an introvert and you're in a group interview, my advice to you is as long as what you are saying is intentional, provides detail, and is relevant to what they're asking, don't stress if you if your answers aren't as long or you're not speaking as frequently as the others. As long as what you're saying is valuable, that's that's what we really want to hear. Um, phone and video interviews, that's where the introverts are going to shine a little more. And that's because they're able to prepare in a way that makes more sense to them, finding that quiet space that's comfortable to them and being able to kind of get in the zone beforehand. Um, now, when the pandemic originally happened and a lot of schools had to switch to online learning, introverts were able to make that transition pretty easily, uh, a lot more so than their extroverted counterparts. So it goes to show that introverts do have a skill set that really lends them to a hybrid or remote workplace. They're able to succeed where, when they're in an environment that's more comfortable to them. These last two types of interviews are focused more on the material or the content in the interview. So a behavioral interview is going to focus on those soft skills like communication, leadership, um, adaptability, resilience, etc. It's going to be more um, situational questions. If you're familiar with the STAR method, this is the type of interview to use the STAR method in. For those who don't know what the STAR method is, it is uh, an acronym, it stands for Situation, Task, Action, Result, and it is a very helpful tool when you are answering these types of uh, behavioral questions. Try to use examples in your answers, really justify what you're saying through those examples. If you aren't really familiar with STAR method, if that's not making a ton of sense to you, again, feel free to add me on LinkedIn. I love the STAR method. I'm happy to continue this conversation and uh, make sure that you're able to feel comfortable if you're going to use a method like that in a behavioral interview. Now, a competency-based interview is going to be focusing more on the practical or technical skills that you would need for a role. So less about... Um, how you would react to a certain situation and more, what is your comfort level using this skill? So think more like a technical interview probably. 
Now we'll talk about the different challenges that someone might experience during an interview. The first one is getting anxious, which I'm sure everybody has at some point before an interview. And the biggest thing for getting rid of that anxiety is just preparation. The more you prepare, the more comfortable you're going to be. Now, don't go rehearsing every single answer. That's not going to help you. But just getting comfortable answering the types of questions that you might expect, practicing in front of a mirror and allowing yourself to really get used to this kind of interview um, environment. Feeling like you're bragging, um, that's a tough one that I think introverts face a little more often than extroverts because uh, like we discussed, extroverts do have that higher self-esteem, um, a little more confidence. So if you are ever worried about your feeling like you're bragging, I think the biggest thing is to um, state the facts. You're not going to come off as bragging if you are just stating exactly what happened. Another way to approach that is to talk about whatever you're talking about with a passion. Your interviewer isn't going to think, oh, this person is being arrogant or prideful. They're going to think this person is passionate about this industry and is excited to tell me about whatever this project is, um, whatever the next step in their career is, they're excited for that. So um, I think it's more about being, um, what was the word? Uh, being, um, sub or excuse me, objective. And then another thing, show, don't tell. If you're able to show your project, you're not really bragging. You're just showing them exactly what happened. Uh, trouble thinking on your feet. So I think for this, the biggest thing is just going to be taking breaths. Like you can pause and you can take a breath if you're ever struggling for this interview. Um, maybe you're not exactly sure how you want to answer the question. So if you take a few seconds to formulate your answer before you start speaking, that's totally fine. Your interviewer probably isn't going to notice. If you're really worried, you can even say, you know, that's a good question. I would like to give an educated answer. So I'd like just a few seconds to formulate and kind of figure out what I'm gonna say. I think your interviewer is probably going to respect that. You really wanna give a well thought out answer. If you are in the middle of answering a question and you find that you aren't really sure where to go next, a um, couple ways that you could approach that. You could go back and kind of repeat the question in your answer to get you back on track. Another option is, again, just taking that breath, relaxing and catching up with your brain or catching up with your mouth, I suppose. Um, if you take a breath and you pause, it's going to feel a lot longer for you than it ever will for your interviewer. So do what you need to do to get back on track and then continue. Um, keeping your answers concise, that's something that I think extroverts are going to struggle with a little more just because they have so many good ideas and they want to share them all. Uh, that's totally fair. When it comes to keeping your answers concise, though, I recommend really focusing on the question and um, what skills they're looking for in your answer. So if you can tell that it's a question about, say, um, communication skills. Really focus all of the details in your answer about your communication skills. Keep any information that you're sharing really relevant to the question and the objective of the question. Um, and again, practicing is really going to be what makes this easier. As you're practicing these types of answers, you're going to notice what or what details are relevant, what details don't necessarily need to be part of the answer. And then feeling underqualified is also a big um, challenge that a lot of us face. And um, imposter syndrome is just something that we all have to get over. And I think the easiest way to do that is knowing that you've made it this far, you're supposed to be there. Um, and have just finding that confidence, knowing that your interviewer wouldn't have scheduled this interview if they didn't believe you had at least a chance to succeed. Uh, another thing is to avoid soft talk. So rather than saying, I think I could be a good fit for this role, just say, I know I could be a good fit for this role because it's going to make you sound a lot more confident. Okay, um, some ways to prepare before the interview. Big thing, research the company, know what they do, know what they're about, know what your role is going to do and how that contributes to the company. Take it a step further. If you know your interviewer's name, research them too. Look them up on LinkedIn. Find you have a common ground with them and you want to talk to them about that. Um, maybe you just want to go and prepare it. If you know something about them and you're able to bring it up, they're going to think, wow, this person did their research. It's always um, 
pretty, pretty cool for me when someone goes, oh, you went to this university. I know someone who went to this university. I'm like, I didn't bring that up. They just happened to do their research beforehand. And I think that's really cool. Another thing is preparing a set of questions to ask. I'm sure you're going to want to know more than what is in that job description. So if you write down some questions beforehand, come prepared. Now, hopefully your interviewer will answer those questions before you even have to ask them. But just in case, you don't want to forget those questions. So just have them ready to go. Uh, next bullet is for the introverts. Gear up for small talk before that interview. If you're anything like me, you are introverted, you don't really like small talk, but you know how important it is, especially when you're trying to make that first impression with your interviewer. So um, it might sound weird, but come up with a couple of topics beforehand. Uh, if you're going in person to an interview and you know it's in an area where there's a big event happening or has happened, ask your interviewer about that. Just show them that you're you're there to not only interview, but just communicate and make a good impression right from the beginning. Practice that with friends as well. Um, practice mock interviewing as well. Whether you're doing that with friends, family members, or yourself, the more you practice, the easier it's going to get. Now, again, you don't want to rehearse your answers word for word because that might make it challenging if the question isn't exactly what you expected it to be. You're trying to kind of force that answer into a question that doesn't really make sense. So um, really, you just want to practice the general template of these types of answers, the, the most common types of questions and how you would potentially answer that. Um, do it in front of a mirror to do it out loud. Get used to hearing how you would answer that. It's going to be very awkward at first, but um, the more you hear yourself, the more you see yourself answering these types of questions, the more comfortable you're going to get. And then don't be afraid to ask for really honest feedback from people. Um, you're not going to know what you need to improve on if someone is telling you, oh, it's perfect. So go ahead and ask, like, where can I improve? I want to be the best interviewee that I can be. So ask questions, ask for feedback. Um, next bullet, dressing for the role. So obviously you want to dress for the role to make a good impression on your interviewer, but there is also something psychological about dressing for success. So looking the part is going to make you feel like you belong in that part. So get nice and dressed up and allow yourself to feel really confident. And then prepare beforehand, go to that location. If you have to drive, you want to know exactly what route is the best to take, practice, get an idea of how long it'll take. If it's a virtual interview, make sure that link works, make sure your camera works, make sure your microphone um, and your headphones work, make sure your headphones are charged, do everything you can to prepare beforehand and really just minimize surprises for the day of the interview. Now on that interview day, we're going to continue to minimize those surprises. So if you are having, say, a virtual interview, you want to minimize every distraction. So if you're living with individuals, tell them, hey, I'm going to be busy during this time at an interview. Please try not to interrupt me. Um, test your Wi-Fi beforehand. Make sure that is not an issue. Uh, if it is an in-person interview, you want to go into that interview room with your phone already silenced or already on do not disturb mode, making sure that there is nothing that's going to distract you during that interview. Um, we talked about going to the location beforehand, which is important, but you want to make sure you know what the traffic pattern is going to be like. Um, it might be 20 minutes to get somewhere at 930 at night, but if your interview is at 930 in the morning, right after morning traffic, it's going to take you a little longer. So know those traffic patterns, um, set yourself up for success, try to arrive early, even honestly, that way you're not, you know, stressing in traffic, you're sitting there relaxing, giving yourself some time to prepare beforehand. I think it's also important to bring notes and a portfolio to show those achievements. So you probably are going to go into that interview knowing about some experiences or achievements you want to talk about. But if you have several, you don't want to forget any of them. So go ahead and just bullet them down so that you can remind yourself in case you get stuck, in case you kind of get lost when you're trying to think on your feet, um, so that you remember everything that you want to share with your interviewer. Also a good idea to just have that note there in case your interviewer shares something that you think is worth writing down. I think it's really important to stay engaged during that interview, but if there is something that you feel is necessary to write down, definitely do that. Again, it's going to show your interviewer that you really care about what they're saying. And then do not undersell yourself. We talked about avoiding small talk, I think, in that last slide, but, or excuse me, soft talk. So again, talk, words like I think, I believe, maybe, it's just, it, it's going to kind of dilute 
whatever the achievement is that you're talking about. So rather than saying, you know, I, I decided to take on a leading role in this project and I think my teammates thought I did an okay job, believe everything turned out well, just say, you know, I took initiative, I decided to be the leader on this project, my roommates were really thankful and the project turned out to be a huge success. I think that is going to sound not only more confident, but also more competent. So really just make sure that you are selling yourself to the best of your ability. After that interview, here's some things you want to do. So first, you want to thank them for their time. Um, definitely do that in the interview, but I think there's also a lot of value in sending them that follow-up email, just again, thanking them for their time. It's going to show that you're interested and also just your name is going to be in writing in their inbox. They're going to be thinking about you a little more frequently. I know I tend to remember the individuals who send me thank you emails after because um, and once I open my computer and see them in my inbox, I'm like, okay, that's right. This person really wants the job. Um, asking them when you want to hear or when you plan to hear about next steps. I think this is a really good idea to not only show them that you're interested, but also kind of ease your anxieties a little bit. If you have a clear timeline, you don't have to be worrying about, should I have heard by now? Does this mean that they're not going to contact me at all? Just Get that clear timeline. And then if after like 10 days to two weeks, you haven't heard anything, that is definitely an appropriate time to reach out and ask when you expect to hear back, when you expect to hear about those next steps, especially if you had already set a clear time on when you would hear back. So you're definitely not being annoying if you're reaching out after 10 days to two weeks to figure out how the status of your application is looking. And... One of the most common questions, if not the most common question we get is, what are some good examples of questions to ask an interviewer or to not ask an interviewer? Um, that's why I wanna talk about these. So when it comes to the questions that you wanna ask your interviewer, anything that shows, again, that you are really invested in your long-term career. So um, how will you measure my performance? What are some challenges I might face in this position? How has this organization been successful? Um, also good idea to get an idea of what the first couple of weeks are going to look like, what your expectations are those first couple of weeks, the first couple of months. Um, this last question, number five, what level of freedom do I have in determining my own work objectives, deadlines, and methods of measurement? I think that's a good type of question to show that you really um, eventually want to be an independent worker. You want to take that initiative and um, kind of let your manager know that they don't need to be micromanaging you. You want to succeed in this industry and be successful and independent. Um, anything that's going to show that you really want to grow is a great question to ask. Um, more important questions that we don't want to ask. So anything that can be answered by doing a quick read of that job description, um, definitely don't ask those types of questions. If you were to ask that, your interviewer is going to think, oh, this person forgot to read the job description. They didn't really come prepared. Same thing. If you can do a quick internet search to figure out what the company does, that's not the type of question you want to ask. Come prepared. Know as much as possible. Um, Questions like, when can I expect to receive a promotion or a raise? I fully understand why you would want to know that. Um, I would recommend, again, framing this in terms of growth. What does growth look like in the first year? What does growth look like in the first two years? Showing that you want, um, you know, it's not only about money, but also about what your long-term career path is going to look like. Then any like loophole questions like, when can I start taking sick time or vacation days? How many sick days can I take before it's an issue? How many times can I be late before it's an issue? Those are questions that are telling your interviewer, oh, they're going to really figure out how to not work as soon as possible. So you want to avoid those for sure. And then number six, another question that I fully understand why you would want to ask that. You want to know kind of what the negatives are. I think it's important to avoid negative talk in the interview though you don't want that to be the one thing your interviewer remembers so just try to word it in a way that again shows you want to grow so what is the challenge i might face here um yeah hopefully that helps um definitely questions that are going to give you a better idea of what your time is going to look like what your growth is going to look like those are great questions to ask um, questions that could have been figured out through research or questions that show that you are not going to take this job seriously you want to avoid. Hopefully that was helpful.
And that is all I have. So um, I don't think the Q&A is going to work. Um, so if you guys want to put it in the chat or just unmute yourself and ask it that way, I'm happy to answer any questions that anyone might have. Anybody wants uh, wants to register their interest, um, I'm happy to leave this up if you want to scan. Um, if you register your interest, we'll reach out to you with an email giving you more information about FDM. Um, so yeah, feel free to scan that. And I'll give everyone a couple seconds to do that. And in case anybody wants to add me on LinkedIn. And if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask.